start lecture 15 for this course corrosion protection methods and the topic of for this particular lecture is basically the materials aspect for corrosion protection. If you uh, follow last two lectures, so we have been talking about uh, effect of composition, effect of microstructure and then processing and uh, uh, influence on surface films. In the last lecture, we talked about uh, uh, effect of different alloying elements in uh, 1304 stainless steel, where we have seen that effect of carbon is uh, quite uh, substantial as well as chromium, but at the same time we have seen that effect of manganese uh, as well as nickel on the corrosion behavior of uh, uh, 304 stainless steel in uh, nitric acid is not that substantial. Okay. So, uh, uh, and there the microstructure remains austenitic, uh, so microstructure is fixed, uh, but uh, composition is changing. And uh, now, uh, let us uh, take some more examples on effect of composition and interestingly, uh, it is very difficult to distinguish composition and microstructure at times uh, we might see that when we change the composition microstructure would also change, uh, but still if we only talk about composition effect. Uh, then we can take example of stainless steel design. Okay. So, composition effect. Okay. See, if we talk about uh, uh, stainless steel, and simply uh, the perspective is alloying perspective. So, we have several uh, uh, stainless steels, uh, if we consider a uh, simple 304. Uh, Let us say we take Three zero four, where the composition is uh, mainly iron, nineteen chrome, nine nickel. Now, if we add uh, more chromium as well as nickel then strength and corrosion resistance both improve. So, we are adding we get uh, variance like 309, 310, 314, 330 these are the steel we can design and then uh, if we add a uh, little more nickel it actually goes for the improvement would be this is improvement part if we talk about uh, corrosion and strength both improves and here if we add further nickel we can increase high temperature 
oxidation and corrosion resistance. So, I would say strength corrosion resistance. So, here it is better to put corrosion resistance part. both improves and here oxidation and corrosion resistance improves. So, we get a variance like uh, nickel chromium iron alloy. So, this is one aspect then uh, we can get uh, to the other extreme where we can have no nickel ok you can decrease chromium content. So, then it will get to the phase that will form it will be martensitic and we get variance like 403, 410, even 420 those are the martensitic stainless steel we can now, if we only talk about corrosion property point of view uh, as well as when we have corrosion at the same time we have to also look at uh, machinability, then we can add uh, sulphur. So, that will improve machinability. Machinability improves we get variance like 303. Okay. Then uh, we can add uh, chromium, molybdenum, nitrogen at the same time uh, nickel content can be lowered it can improve strength as well as it can also add to corrosion resistance. So, then we can have plus chromium, molybdenum, nitrogen, lower nickel content. So, strength improves. So, we get variants like duplex SS. And if we add further chromium, nickel, molybdenum, nitrogen, so that time it will be a super uh, duplex stainless steel. So, add further chromium, molybdenum, nitrogen as well as nickel. So, that will get to the super duplex steel. So, this is a variance I Now, we can also have uh, precipitation hardened stainless steel uh, where we can have uh, strengthening due to precipitates where copper, titanium, aluminum are added, but with a low nickel content. So, we have a variance like plus copper, titanium, aluminum at the same time lower nickel content precipitation hardening so that would lead to variance like uh, precipitation hardened stainless steel
there could be 200 series uh, we can add manganese nitrogen at a lower nickel content we get uh, 201, 202, those stainless steel we can get. Now, we can add molybdenum. In fact, molybdenum actually improves the peating resistance. So, here we can add molybdenum. So, that would uh, improve the peating resistance, peating or crevice resistance. improves. It would uh, get me uh, one popular alloy which is uh, 316. So, if we add and also 317 where more molybdenum three one seven have more amount of molybdenum. So, it would have a higher crevice as well as peating resistance. There would be a super austenitic here the microstructure is austenite. Uh, there could be a development of super austenitic uh, stainless steel with a much higher corrosion resistance. Of course, the cost would go up. So, add uh, nickel, molybdenum, nitrogen. So, that would uh, you can say the corrosion resistance increase heavily and that generates uh, uh, super austenitic stainless steel. Now, one can get uh, we can add molybdenum niobium tantalum. So, those are actually stabilizing uh, elements. Avoid sensitization. So, that generates a steel called 347. So, this is the stainless steel it generates. Uh, uh, if we add uh, titanium, that also helps in uh, uh, stabilization and avoid sensitization, same function. So, if you see this, so it applies to here also, applies to there. So, this also would lead to a steel called 321. In fact, every time we have alloying addition, it also improves the strength, but here the alloying addition is so low that it actually uh, the serves different purpose. Okay. So, as we know stabilization, if we try to discuss this part, the stabilization part if we have a chromium carbide precipitation along the grain boundary. So, let us say this is my steel and the chromium carbide precipitation happens along the grain boundary which is simple uh, 304 SS and this happens if we have a faulty welding practice. Now, this actually combines processing plus microstructure. So, that combination actually lead to sensitization. So, here processing is nothing but welding. Okay. So, if we 
during welding after welding if we cool slowly between the temperature around 450 to 650 degrees Celsius uh, chromium carbide formation along the grain boundary is possible. So, faulty we can say faulty practice slow cooling in the temperature range 450 to 650 degree Celsius. So, that time microstructure is modified as it is shown in the schematic where we have austenite grain and the grain boundary the chromium has to be in the solution for giving you a very good passivation as well as corrosion resistance. But once we have this faulty processing, we can get a zone of, we have a zone where this particular zone just surrounding the grain boundary where precipitates are formed, chromium carbide. So, these are chromium carbide precipitate mainly CR23, C6 kind of precipitate. So, that surrounding zone becomes precipitate free zone as well as the chromium content can go down below even 2 percent or 3 percent. So, that particular condition it would not give you the passivation the passivation would be weak there and all other places we have uh, chromium level to be around 18 to 19 percent which gives you good amount of a uh, good degree of passivation strong passivation. So, rest all the places are acting like cathode and only those narrow passage close to the uh, grain boundary zone where car chromium has gone down below 3 to, three to 2 percent. So, there it will be a narrow anode and a large cathode. So, the dissolution would happen along that zone. So, it will give you typical intergranular corrosion. So, so these zones would give you intergranular corrosion. So, now, so that means uh, one can modify the processing or the good practice having a good practice that means cooling fast the modification could be one is within that temperature cool fast. So, we would not get chromium carbide precipitation because within that temperature zone chromium carbide precipitation kinetics is very fast. So, this is one modification. So, the modified processing Fine. So, that is what people use uh, a quick welding, let us say arc welding and no gas welding. So, if we have gas welding, the large area of that particular block which are which is large area of that particular two blocks which are being welded will be heated up and uh, this kind of intergranular corrosion would happen uh, just away from little away from the actual well bid. If you want to understand this please go back and then see the lecture on intergranular corrosion. So, we call it well decay. So, this particular situation when it happens we call it well decay. Okay. So, if we do not do gas welding so, the cooling around just away from the weld zone. So, this is my weld zone let us say and these are the two blocks actually uh, intergranular corrosion happens just away from that zone where the cooling rate when it cools down within this temperature zone 450 to 650 would be slower. Okay the longer time will be spent in that temperature zone 
450 to 650 and chromium carbide precipitation would form. So, here chromium carbide precipitation happens and that is that's the zone called well decay. Well decay zone. So, modified processing if we do arc welding uh, not much of the block the two blocks will be heated up and uh, at the same time uh, arc welding spends little time for actual welding process. So, the cooling rate overall will be much faster. So, the chromium carbide precipitation can be avoided this is on the processing part. Now, on the microstructure part ok. So, uh, here because of that faulty welding the microstructure is modified because it is not remaining homogeneous single phase austenite. single phase austenite. So, that is what the problem is happening, but uh, if we follow this modified processing it will remain as homogeneous single phase, but still there could be a possibility during cooling if by chance the cooling rate uh, at some of the locations close to that welding uh, within that 450 to 650 uh, slows down then chromium carbide steel can form and the precipitation this passivation in this 304 stainless steel is offered by the chromium in the solution state and chromium has to be in solid solution. So, all the time we have to maintain 18 to 19 percent in the solid solution in the single phase austenite, but if it is not possible then we have to take help of alloying. The major thing is chromium carbide precipitation, but if we will not allow chromium carbide to precipitate then we can avoid this sensitization to a great extent. So, that time we add, so this is one solution, solution 1. The second solution add little bit of titanium, niobium or tantalum. So, these have very high affinity to carbon as compared to chromium. So, now even if uh, there is a possibility of carbide formation, this carbon will be taken care by these elements and then form carbide. So, there is no possibility of chromium carbide formation because the carbon activity is so low for the chromium carbide formation. So, that way we stabilize the carbon at the same time we are not allowing chromium carbide to form. So, this is called stabilization. And here we have to follow the modified processing route which is a fast cooling that means arc welding. Uh, at the same time even if it forms chromium carbide to form that carbide will be titanium, niobium or tantalum carbide. So, that is what this stabilized steels uh, can prevent peating as well as intergranular failure because uh, chromium free zone is not possible there and chromium always will remain in solution and give you very good passivation. Now, there are variants like uh, uh, if we can reduce carbon. Now, this is alloying. So, this is example of alloying. So, that means we are changing the composition. So, alloying can also uh, get rid of uh, this sensitization or uh, intergranular corrosion in stainless steel. So, if we can reduce carbon, so third process, third solution could be uh, again this is uh, effect of composition or we can say alloying. In fact, here we are going for 
लो कार्बन कंटेंट सो जनरली दिस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर पिक्चर दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टील इफ वी कंसिडर दिस द कार्बन कंटेंट इज बेसिकली अराउंड जीरो पॉइंट जीरो एट टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो नाइन वेट परसेंट सो हेयर ऑल आर वेट परसेंट सो दिस कार्बन इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो एट टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो नाइन weight percent so if we reduce this carbon content to the level of 0.02 to 0.03 weight percent so the possibility of chromium carbide again reduces because to get to chromium carbide we need sufficient carbon in the solution so if it is not there the sensitization can be avoided but this is not stabilization stabilization is this particular term is related to when we add this so then it is called stabilization and here we are actually reducing the carbon content to avoid chromium carbide formation again it will stop the sensitization so there are variants like this in fact uh, those variants are coming from 304 itself as well as uh, uh, we can get uh, from 316 so we can get uh, from here we can get uh, 304l and whenever that is low carbon we term it as l that l sign is given so 304 l it's a low carbon okay now then uh, we can also get from here low carbon to get variants like p16 l p17 l so those variants are possible now we have seen martin citric we have seen duplex so the ferritic stainless steel is coming here no nickel the structure would be ferritic because in stainless steel uh, nickel actually gives you the austenitic structure that is an austenite stabilizer so if we have no nickel it will turn into ferrite so those variants are 409 430 so these are the variants and then if we further add to have extra bit of corrosion as well as pitting and crevice resistance so add chromium and molybdenum more corrosion resistance mainly pitting and crevice so that particular resistance improves so we get a super ferritic stainless steel so this is another variance we get now if we look at uh, this particular picture is very evident that we have to take care of in spite in addition to uh, corrosion resistance we have to also take care of uh, machinability strength so that's what those alloying additions are done and the philosophy behind different alloying additions for example niobium tantalum titanium those are basically stabilizing element low carbon level so this particular part if we take care this particular part so from this to this level we are actually reducing the carbon as well as titan adding titanium tantalum or niobium to avoid chromium carbide formation and those are actually improve the sensitization resistance 
So, we can say this particular uh, it is basically improves sensitization resistance. Okay. And all the cases whenever we have extra chromium as well as molybdenum as well as nitrogen, we can get a good degree of corrosion resistance. Now, if we look at the nitrogen effect in the last lecture we have talked about adding little bit of extra nitrogen actually improves the corrosion resistance also. And most of the cases we are talking about the effect of this alloying elements on the either modification of microstructure or basically the stabilization one particular phase or even dual phase. And the third one is we are actually every time maintaining the passive layer to be strong. Okay. So, to give you a very good corrosion resistance. So, we will talk a few more aspects on the effect of composition uh, towards the corrosion protection in our next lecture. So, till then thank you.